Right then, the toughest T20 is fast approaching and here we are on cricket.com to, of course, break down each team for you and we'll do that, of course, throughout the week as we fast approach the IPL 2022, which just can't wait really. So today we're going to be talking about Punjab Kings because, look, at the end of the day, these guys perhaps have done the best business in the auction, but that's my opinion. We have our chief writer who will be joining us right now to give us more insight. In fact, we'll bring him on the screen right now. Somesh, first and foremost... How are you? I'm good. How are you? Going well, recovering after a slight little dip in health. But nevertheless, pink of health. We're going to be talking about a red team today, of course, in terms of the Punjab Kings. Your first thoughts about them and the business they did, of course, not too long ago in the auction. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Anil Kumble made a point a few days back where, I mean, he spoke uh, directly about having more intent. So that clearly talks about you know the shift in the mindset because we all of us by now know what this what KL Rahul said a couple of years ago and that statement has actually uh, it created a buzz uh, around everywhere but uh, not only have they moved on from uh, KL Rahul as a marquee player but uh, based on the quite a few players that they've bought in the auction seems like we will see a shift in tempo in the manner Punjab Kings approach the game. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating, of course, and we're going to be breaking down every team, like I said, so you can catch it all on cricket.com on the website. And uh, let's get straight into it then, because we're going to be showing you little things differently in cricket.com, like we always do. We'll start off by just painting a picture on the squad depth. Now, guys, bear with us, because there's plenty of names, as you can see in the screen. So, what stands out for you, first and foremost, because we'll pick up the weaknesses and strengths. But in terms of this squad on paper, how do you assess it? Yeah, I mean, uh, while uh, looking at Punjab and analyzing the squad, the first thing that uh, that was really notable was the number of all-rounders that they have. Even right now, if you look at the number of face bowling all-rounders and the spin bowling all-rounders that they have, it's like so many options. And this is the most notable shift that they've, they've done from how the team was built up for the past couple of days. They were really struggling to find players who can, you know, do multiple roles. And they had to slot in players uh, at six and seven, which were neither here nor there. But now, looking at the squad, they have proper options who can, you know, contribute in both manner. So that 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 is the biggest shift in Punjab squad from what we saw in the past three years. Yeah, it's important that you say that because look, the takeaways from their fan base or anyone watching the game would see that look, the all rounders are quite a few, and they have the all rounder of all. Uh, trades in terms of Liam Livingston. Let's now just kind of break it down further in terms of showing the best possible 11 according to our writers and our think tank. Now, agree or disagree with us in the comments below, ladies and gentlemen, but this is exactly what we feel that we're putting the starting 11 up in this year's campaign for Punjab Kings. Now, Som, there's a question mark in that one down position. Who do you think will fit in there? Because pretty much everyone picks themselves, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so uh, that... Uh... Question mark is by choice and not it's it's not an error from the part of the design. So I think that that question mark is perhaps the biggest uh, uh, not concern per se, but uh, the biggest thing to ponder in terms of uh, when we think from Punjab's management perspective or we as fans as well. We look forward to what happens there because, like you said, every other player is sort of fit into their role, but uh, they don't really have a uh, you know set number three. Uh, and it, of course, has to be uh, someone Indian because other overseas roles are taken. So th there is no uh, one name that pops up that can fit into that role. What they might end up doing is probably have Johnny Bairstow batting at three. Of course, Bairstow has done well either as an opener or he's, he's done well at four. He's not really bad at three. But trust me, in a T20 game, a three and a four is 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 not always the same thing. Number four is actually one of the toughest uh, roles in T20 cricket and Bairstow is one of those very rare players who've done well in that role. So maybe the, what they'll have to do is maybe shuffle him around, ask him to bat at three, and if it's someone in at four. Now the other issue with Punjab is that someone cannot really be a right-hander because if you yeah. if you go back to their uh, eleven uh, in in the top six, Shikhar Dhawan is the only lefty uh, in the top six, and of course he's an opener, so either he has to stick around and play that anchor role till about the 16th over mark or preferably even till later but if he gets out there'll be a situation where they'll have to uh, you know, shift in a lefty 
So that, that's where I feel maybe uh, it, it's going to be a big season for Raj Bhava because they'll have to bleed him early. Because uh, again, if, if you go go back to their squad depth, there is no uh, other left-hander option apart from him in, term, in the batting department that can pop up. Uh, so maybe what we'll see is them starting with Bhava at three or four to begin with. Uh, the other option is to have uh, Bhanuka Rajapaksha play in, in place of Bairstow, which they might have to do later on uh, because uh, Bairstow might not be available as now he, he's, he's England's one of the main uh, players in, in the test arena. So he, he, they're playing West Indies right now, so he might not start. And later on when they're playing New Zealand in June, he might leave early as well. So yeah, these 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 are a couple of concerns, and of course, uh, we, we one must not forget that when Besto leaves, it'll also open that wicket keeping hole, which they'll have to somehow uh, you know, fill in through probably Prabhs and Singh. Yeah, I mean it's some vital points you mentioned there. I think that's the blatantly obvious one: the fact that they have the lack of left-handers. Shikhar has been exceptional in IPL. We know that, and Mayank Agarwal, of course, the captain of Punjab Kings, will supplement that opening partnership well. What are their strengths then? Because you spoke about the weaknesses. What can they rely upon? Because, look, we've spoken about the all-rounders, some fantastic names in T20 cricket there. Odin Smith, Benny Howell, we saw a little bit of him in the 100. You mentioned Liam Livingston, who could pretty much do everything. What is their main strength, Som, according to you? Loads of it. I mean, the, the batting lineup is scary. So, yeah. uh, I feel really good uh, for Mayang because, because of the sheer selflessness uh, with which he carried uh, his batting in the past two three years. I mean, if if we if we uh, go back to how he used to bat, he he never really cared for his wicket because that job was preferred for uh, KL Rahul, who was essentially looking to keep his wicket intact. Whereas Mayank was like going gungo from the get go, uh, and it's good to finally you know have uh, him uh, being made the captain and now has that support. So, I mean, if you look at it, him and uh, Dhawan opening, again, Mayank's role is not going to change. He's going to be, you know, brisk right from the get-go. Uh, what we've seen in the past couple of years, Shikha Dhawan has been really good with boundary reading in the middle overs. It's his key strength. That is how he succeeded in the o ODI scheme of things as well. And somehow has managed to find that knack in T20s. And later on, of course, there is, there's, there'll be based on Livingston. I mean, uh, Livingston has not really done well in the IPL before, but... He's, he's a different beast in the past year or so from what we've seen. He's done well for England. He's done yeah. well in the PSL. And there is absolutely no, you know, there should be no reason for him to not do well in the IPL. And then, of course, there is Shah Rukh Khan, who is probably the most fearsome uh, lower middle order hitter in India right now. <laughs> I know there is Hardik Pandya, but, you know, there are some concerns on how his back is going to turn up, but I mean, Shah Rukh Khan is a scary prospect at this point of time. So the, the batting is great. And then, then in, the, in the lower order, they have uh, numerous options uh, uh, in the uh, in, in the overseas department. They have, they have uh, can you go, go back to the squad depth again? I'm, I don't want to. Yeah, absolutely. Because look, at the end of the day, you've spoken about the batting, which is great. And you mentioned the lower, the, the, the batsmen lower down the order as well. What I want to actually ask you and finish this chat with is the bowlers. Because Punjab have kind of had themselves wanting in the last couple of seasons. They've got their paces all right. But with the spin coach in Anil Kumble, people like Rahul Chahar, Harpreet Prar, and maybe even Liam Livingston could be very handy, right? Yeah, of course. So, uh... With Livingston, you're getting both uh, wrist spin and off spin. Uh, as you know, he's he's the most all-rounder <laughs> of all all-rounders. So yeah. that's there. Then they have Harpreet Brar, who's a proven IPL player now, and Rahul Chahar. So uh, you, they sort of have all the three spin departments in their first level cover. And then in, in the pace department, they have the left-arm uh, option of Arshdeep Singh. And then, of course, Kagi Sorabada would be helpful at the uh, at the death. And then um, it, it depends on uh, who they choose between Benny Howell, Odin Smith uh, to, you know, sort of fill in their number eight spot. They can also go go with Nathan Alice, who's who's, bet, who's a better bowler. I mean, not a better bowler, but at least a more proven bowler than Odin Smith and Benny Howell. Ellis did well for them last season when uh, guys like uh, Riley Meredith and... Uh, Jai Richardson. I'm forgetting the Aussie name. Jai Richardson <laughs> could not live up to the 
sort of money that they were they, they, that they received in the uh, initial auction. So that's there. The only slight concern for them is a not not a proper off spinner. I mean, they'll have to rely on Livingston uh, to do that duty. So yeah. maybe maybe opposition lefties can target them on that front. But apart from that, they have a lot of aspects covered. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame you for kind of uh, not keeping track of those names because they kind of splashed the cash in in various names, like you said, there, Meredith and Richardson, which didn't pay off. So hopefully, it's not a wooden spoon for Punjab that, uh, this time around. We'll leave it there, Soam. Of course, there's plenty of other teams to chat with. Hopefully, from a Punjab fan perspective, all these guys come to the party and that left-hander conundrum doesn't really bite them in the backside. That, thanks for watching. That's all we have in this video. We'll catch you soon.